Welcome to another Figma tutorial. Styles are a big improvement to Figma, and in this video, we're going to show you how to create them so you can start using them throughout your designs. Before we get started, let's start by answering the question, what are styles? Styles allow you to save certain properties and then later reuse them across your designs. You can use styles to define your brand's colors, typography, effects, and layout grids. Your color styles can be then applied to fills, strokes, and text in your designs. Your styles can also be published to your team library and accessed by everyone on your team. If you don't yet have a Figma team to publish your styles to, you can create a free starter team by clicking the new team button in the file browser. Now that we know what styles are, let's try making some, starting with a color style. Let's start by drawing a circle using the ellipse tool. By default, our shape's fill color will be a neutral gray. If we look to the fill section of the properties panel on the right hand side, we can change this to a custom fill color, just as we could before styles were introduced. Let's change this to a darker custom gray color. If we plan on using the same gray across our design, it would be smart for us to save this as a color style so we can manage it and reuse it. Looking back to the layers panel, we can click on the quadruple dot icon to show styles. We haven't made any styles yet, so right now this is empty. We can create a new color style from our fill color by clicking the plus icon. We'll also give this a name. I'm going to name it primary text because I want to use this as the default text color for a website I'm designing. Then, we just click Create Style, and we're done. Our style has been created and now appears in the Styles Picker that was previously empty. The Properties panel also looks a bit different now. Where we used to have the Custom Color Picker, we now see our color style. It's important to understand that the circle on the canvas is not our style, but is actually just a circle object with our color style applied to it. If we choose to delete this circle, our style would not be deleted because each style belongs to the file in which it was created as a local style and not to the element to which it was applied. If you want to view your local styles, just click on the canvas to deselect everything and your local styles will be displayed in the properties panel on the right. To actually delete a style, you can right click it in the list and select delete style. You can also edit a style from here, but we'll show you another way to do this next. Let's duplicate our circle to demonstrate a few more things. Now, we have two circles, each with our primary text color style applied to them. With one circle selected, if we hover over the style, two new options appear, Edit Style and Detach Style. If we click Edit Style, the Properties panel is replaced by the Style Editor, where we can edit our style's name and properties. If we change the color of the style, each element that has the style applied will be updated instantly. Let's undo that change for now. We can click the back arrow in the top left or click on the canvas to return to the normal view. If we have a shape with a style applied to it, but we'd rather use the custom color picker, we can select Detach Style to remove the style. Now, if we were to update our gray style, this circle will no longer be affected by that change. Now that we know how to create color styles, let's create a few more before moving on. As I create these styles, I'm trying not to include a color like blue or yellow in the name. Instead, we're giving them names describing their use in applications. This helps us in case we want to change that yellow to green in the future, so we don't have to change the name of our style. It's also possible to save gradients and even images as color styles in Figma. Let's make a gradient style to complement our existing solid color styles. I'm also going to adjust the angle of the gradient, since the angle is also included in the style. Just like that, we've created a handful of color styles to be used across our designs. It's not required to create all of your styles right away before you start working. It's okay to just create new styles as you use colors, texts, and effects in your work. Your color styles aren't just limited to being used as fills, you can also use them for strokes. If we create a new rectangle shape, we can go to the Stroke section of the Properties panel, click the quadruple dot icon to open the Style Picker, and our color styles we created earlier are ready to be used. We can still adjust other properties of the stroke, like the weight. Styles can also be applied to typography. Here we have seven different text elements that we're going to turn into text styles. I filled each of these text objects with some descriptive text just to speed up the process and clarify their properties. We can create text styles in the same way. By clicking the styles icon, clicking the plus icon, giving them a name, and saving the style. With our text styles created, we'll be able to apply them to text or even substrings of a single text element. Now that we understand the process of creating styles, let's create a few effect styles and a layout grid style. For some of these, we're adding two different drop shadows. One harder shadow with less blur, 
and then another softer shadow with more blur applied. If you apply multiple properties of the same type, such as two different drop shadows, all of them will be included in the style when it's created. Last, we'll create a single 12 column layout grid style. And that's it. We've created color, text, effects, and layout grid styles, each ready to be used in our designs. Let's review what we've learned. Styles allow you to save properties and then later reuse them across your designs, and if you update your style, the properties will instantly update across the file. You can make color styles which can be applied to fills, strokes, and text. You can also create text, effect, and layout grid styles. When you create a style, it belongs to the file in which it was created as a local style. Publish them to the team library to be shared with your team. You don't need to create your styles before you start designing. Create them whenever it makes sense.